Hello and welcome back. Today we're continuing with LightGBM and our next aspect is gradient based one side sampling or GOS. All right, so let's have a look at this. We have this initial model. Uh, it's going to make some predictions. Uh, then it's going to, we're going to look at the errors and those errors uh, or those predictions uh, and errors have gradients. And so for example, if we're using the uh, mean squared error formula for our loss function, uh, which looks like that, then the loss function will look like this, where uh, in this case, it's illustrated for a um, simple scenario of a simple linear regression, uh, not necessarily decision tree. Here we have on the x-axis a w parameter, which uh, um, for example, is the slope coefficient of the simple linear regression and the x on the y-axis, we have the loss function. So this is just for illustration purposes and in gradients, so basically, uh, if uh, our parameter is uh, the in the simple linear regression is if the slope um, of the of the linear regression is somewhere here, then uh, this will be the gradient. So this blue line or this blue angle is the gradient. So we can see it's quite high here. Here it's quite low. Here it's quite low, and so on. And so you'll be familiar familiar with this chart if you've uh, used. Uh, gradient descent for algorithm optimization in the past, such as in neural networks. So two things to point out. First of all, gradient descent is not used for training decision trees. Um, it doesn't have to be used for all algorithm, algorithms. In fact, it's just very powerful for neural networks, and that's one of the ways it gains popularity. It's not used for uh, optimizing decision trees. We're just using it as a reminder of what gradient is. And gradient in a nutshell is a collection of the of the loss functions, in this case, loss functions derivatives with respect to its variables, uh, showing the direction of the fastest increase. So here, uh, gradient is going in this way. That's That's basically our large gradient, lower gradient, and so on. And so we're going to use this to our advantage. In the case of LightGBM, we're going to use gradients for this gradient-based one-side sampling. So let's see how that works. So here we've got our data points. Let's say we've got a thousand of them in our data set. Um, after like a model, the initial model does its predictions, we calculate the gradients. And then we're going to, like some of them is higher, some of them are low. We're going to order these gradients in uh, descending order. So the highest ones are over here, the lowest ones are over here. And what that tells us that the, the highest ones are the ones that um, basically if we uh, improve these, if we do something about these data points, if we model them a little like better, we can get the best improvement for our loss function. That's what it's basically saying. A high gradient means that um, the say if you change this, um, if you make an adjustment to this data point or you model it a little bit better and you model this one a little bit better, this one will give you more return for your investment. It'll give you more return. Uh, it'll give you, it'll improve the loss function more than if you uh, get the same, um, get a similar adjustment for this uh, variable. So it's better to focus on the ones with the higher gradients because we can get more out of them. And that's exactly what this Gauss uh, algorithm does. It takes the highest uh, points, uh, it takes the points with the highest gradients, or actually 20% of them, 20% uh, of all the points, it takes 20%, the 20% highest, or the top 20%, and it uses all of these points in the next decision tree. So the next decision tree is kind of like a sampling. Remember we spoke about sampling, that you can show the next decision tree, not all of the rows, but some of the rows. Well, this is like smart sampling. It's saying, okay, we'll show the next decision tree, uh, the rows with the that had the highest gradient in this current um, in this first decision tree or in this first uh, initial model. And then out of the remainder, we're not going to discard all of them. Uh, we get this remainder, this 80%, we're going to select 10% of them. So we'll drop most of them, but we'll keep 10% at random um, just for like completeness sake or to get some diversity in there. And so using these points, we're going to take the top 20% and 10% of the bottom 80%. We're going to build the next tree. Uh, and then we'll repeat the whole process. We'll get the predictions, get the errors, get the gradients, do all of this, and so on. So every time we're sampling from our, or we're subsampling our data, we're looking at some of the rows instead of all of them. Um, and, but we're doing it in a smart way. And that smart way is called gradient-based one-side sampling and makes uh, this algorithm more efficient. So there you go. That's how it works.
And if you'd like a refresher or some additional information on how Gradient is calculated and what it is, I recommend this tutorial by Josh Starmer. It's called Gradient Descent Step-by-Step. Step. Just remember, Gradient Descent is not used for optimizing uh, decision trees, but uh, you can uh, learn a bit more about Gradient from this tutorial. Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning. And I look forward to seeing you there.